what's up everyone how we doing um yeah today is awesome uh we have a special guest that is going to show some animals i know that has never been shown on our channel um i would love to have some of these animals but they require a bigger tub uh bigger housing so i don't have them um but we oh and I kicked him completely off the stream. Uh-oh. Well, he was on. <laughs> and uh, I boosted. I guess I kicked him off. I'm hoping he can get back on. Oh. Um, great way to start it. How we doing? Uh, uh, toasted Dumas? Damas? Or? Uh, so, um, yeah, as soon as he gets back on, we're going to be clicking him on. Uh, I guess we might as well give a shout out to Castro Constrictors. Everyone definitely go check out his channel. Uh, he has a YouTube channel and Instagram. He does a lot of different little funny little reels with it. Um, Emily and I get a laugh out of him every time. But we got Joel Bartley. How we doing? Yes, 18 our snakes. Not bad. Um, been staying busy. Uh, I guess whoops, okay, he's back on. Um, yeah, I've been staying busy. I uh, started doing the excavating again, so I've been nonstop with that, uh, trying to get the solar array all done so I can start on my buddy's house. Um, and then the snakes and rats are just the rats were stepping up, so we're getting even more busy with those. Um, but everyone, uh, here we go. We're going to bring him on. But first, Emily has been doing, she did the last two intros, everyone. She did Tyler's Toxic Balls, and she's done uh, Andrews with Snake Works here. So this is all Emily, and I'm definitely proud of her on this, trying to teach her the editing way of it all. So here we go. What's up? How we doing? Hey, what's up, Matt? Great intro. Thank you. Oh no, don't thank me. Thank Emily on that one. She yeah, uh Yeah, she's getting right into it. So uh yeah, I mean uh, you want to introduce yourself and uh, tell us, you know, a little bit about you, what you read and everything. And all right, yeah. My name's Andrew McGuire. Um 44, lived in New England my whole life, and probably 10 years ago I went to a party. Somebody had a boa constrictor, and I was like, pretty much changed my mind about snakes and reptiles in general. So, picked up a ball python, and everybody else knows how that goes. You get one, and you know, you have like 15 of them. Um, yeah. <laughs> I ended up branching out into a short tails over the past couple of years, and I have a couple of boas too. So, but right now, I'm just breeding ball pythons, and hopefully, yep. in a couple of years, we'll be doing short tails and boa constrictors as well. Yeah, I love the short tails. I wish I could have some, but they just need a big, the females need a big tub. Yeah, and even at this point right now, like my biggest ones are in like the B70s, and now I got to shop around for basically Christmas tree tubs or some of those yeah. huge RS tubs. Yeah, the boa tubs there. Yeah, so they're going to have to make an investment in that. I mean, I, I think just with shipping, a six rack was like four grand or something crazy like that. Yeah, the, the, I will say like the ARSs or Freedom Breeder Racks, they, they're worth it, but they are expensive. Yeah, but, I mean, I'm happy with the ARS I got behind me. I was using, yeah. the, uh, you know, more of the hobbyist type stuff, and you, you just keep on buying those things, and they're stacked up to the ceiling in here, so. Yep. I, you know, I personally like those ones for my hatchling rack. I want to build a, I have 80 FB5 tubs. And I want to build one of the plastic ones just for that, because you can fit a lot of snakes into a smaller area with them. Yeah, God, yeah, I yeah. Have, okay. uh, too, huh? many snakes. too many snakes. Oh, you can't have too many. <laughs> <laughs> you have a lot more than I do, and I guess I need to expand here. You know, it's funny because I mean, I met you right in the beginning. Yeah. You know. I mean, this is 
Actually, I can bring her out. Even though she's in shed. My trick girl. Oh, no doubt. Yeah. She's in deep shed, though. She's got that little, like, almost rectangle on her back. Huh? That, that little rectangle spot right there, closest to the camera. Uh, maybe, like, oh, maybe this is trick. But, I mean, I bred her and didn't get any tricks from the pairing. Or maybe they were so low expression. I, was, at the time. I will say she has thrown some really low expressions where I have, I told them as possible tricks. Yeah. Um, and then she's had some that's just been straight out super busy, you know. Yeah. I'm just, huh? I'm glad it worked out for you. Yeah, remember that we were in the Martin's parking lot, and all those people kept on coming over. I know how. I think we were in there for almost an hour and a half, two hours. Oh, yeah, easily. <laughs> yeah, people. That's the best part about bringing out a snake. You know, people don't see that often. And then we had two snakes, full-grown adult females there, because uh, yeah. I had that lemon blast tech ghost from Matt Leaf there too. Yeah. Yeah, it was. That was a pretty cool. That was my first experience of doing stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, it's amazing, too, when you actually get those animals out in the light. Like, I'm in the basement, and sometimes I go to, like, sell people animals, and I'm like, oh, my God, that thing's amazing when you get it outside. Oh, yeah. Well, that's, like, my display. I have those nice lights there just for that because I mean, I hate them because they're bright, but they display the color. Beautiful, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, go ahead. No, no, what was that? I was going to say, like, when I started going to shows, like, 10 years ago, you might see, you know, one or two of the larger vendors, like Nerd, would have the lights over the table. And yeah. that's now become pretty much the standard to show off. Everyone's come up to that level. So that's exciting to see everyone just bringing themselves into the game. Yeah, I, I can say that it makes a difference. Oh my you God. know, especially if you're not, like, New Hampshire is nice if you're by the window. Because you get the light, but like if you're in some of these expos, they're right smack in like a civic center, and there yeah. is no light. <laughs> yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. So, um, what's your favorite morph on ball pythons? Um, trick. <laughs> I'm sorry, everyone. I I haven't been looking at the comments. I got stuck on the band part with the intro. <laughs> but what was your favorite morph? Oh, Trek. I mean, that's just one of those things that I got years ago. And, you know, it's actually meeting you inspired me to get more into this. But before I was like, oh, I'm just glad with what I have. And then seeing how you were so passionate about stuff, that's when I decided to kind of get back into it more. And now I've that's awesome. put Trick into everything that I have just to see what comes out. Do it, do it, do it. Yeah. <laughs> you you got me into loving the Trick gene. That is like, I can probably say it's probably one of my favorites. Yeah, that's just something you never know what you're going to get. Like some of the things that have hatched out here over the years, I, I, I'm just shocked. You know, yeah. like, you well, know, I did. Was that? That trick, uh, trick albino, that was pretty sweet. Yeah, I got two of those this year. Um, let me see. I moved a bunch of stuff around. So here's one. All right. All right, hold on. All right, that's not the one I was looking for, but. Oh. <laughs> She's still right here. Let's see what I can get. I can adjust this lighting too if it doesn't work correctly. Oh, that's nice. Let me see if I can get a little more light on this girl. It's not working. I don't know if I can do any better through the show, I will. So this is a pretty decent one. I was happy to see it come out of the egg. There is another one that has a strong stripe. See, I like that how it's holding its colors. It's got nice yellow. Yeah, the uh I have an albino trick from <laughs> looking for food. I I realized <laughs> I hatched out an albino trick years ago, but I wasn't sure. It was very similar to that one. But she came out with super high contrast, and she still is nice. Come here, girl. So she pretty much retained a high level 
of white. She didn't just turn all yellow like a lot of yeah. Them. So it's holding the white then. It's not letting it bleed through. No, it's still really nice contrast on the animal. And that's a female, right? Yeah, she yeah. Grabbed for me last year. That's when I proved her out as trick. Oh and heck yeah! Uh, I'm pairing her up again this year. I'm hoping to make super trick albinos. Heck yeah! Yeah, so we'll see. Hopefully that goes. I think she will. Uh, What's up, VIP morphs? Yeah, I love the trick. I know. Um, Gerald from uh, Forward Motion Reptiles sees. Oops. Oh. Exit. Oh, what did I do? Get, uh, I hate having. To... Sorry, everyone. I just kicked him off. I am horrible. Oh. There we go. Oh. Hey. I'm right. horrible at the computer stuff. That's quite all right. finger syndrome. Huh? That's all right. I'm just glad you got me back. I found out. Here's the other one. Huh? Uh, this is the other trick albino that has the... Uh... Oh, the stripe? Yeah. Now, I'm guessing that's that real goldish looking one. Yeah, it is. That was yeah. pretty Ooh, crazy. And that was just... Yeah. This is also a possible hat tri stripe. Let me see if I huh. I'm going to make some lighting adjustments because I, I don't know how well anybody can see. Oh, right there. There we go. All right. Yeah, if you hold it close to it, that's really nice. Wow, you can see that. That trick pattern looks awesome on the albino. Yeah, that's nice. And that'll hold too. And, and hopefully I can make these into tri stripes at some point. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, dude, that's like a whole bringing the albinos back in right there. Yes, where those have been around for twenty-five years or something like that. And uh, yeah. I mean, you know, everybody everybody knows there's always those ones that are so so, but trick really keeps the pattern, keeps the contrast rather. Yeah, I can say I've noticed like I've got two different trick lines, you know. Cause it's like they're, they're both trick, but they kind of they look different, you know. Yeah, I mean, there's and, trick, hurricane, and blitz. And see, what is your thoughts on them? I've seen a lot of the hurricane stuff. Uh, I don't know. That's a tough one. Uh, Who's that? Hans Winter has all all the like Hayabusa's, the super hurricanes. Yeah, well, because because there are low expression and high expression, like you can't tell what that person's showing you. Like, yeah, is that whole clutch coming out with these crazy swirls on it, or is that you know the ones he's showing you? Well, here's here's the best, which I, yeah. mean, I, I tend to believe that's probably the case. Yeah, I mean, it's like, uh, he's shit. Always, everything's always shit. What? It's good. It means they're eating. Yeah, I know, but. Like you can see how busy he is. Yeah. Wow. What else is in that besides for trick? This is just trick. So oh, that's crazy. Yeah. The pairing was a chocolate trick to a uh entry. Huh, that is yeah, there's just so much more to know about trick because I'm pretty sure like the Enchi and Trick kind of work against each other um yeah yeah they do like this is his sister that's this. Oops, what do we got here so that's a trick and she had albino. You know, I can. Yep, that's nice. Yeah, so I mean, it's just a really heavily patterned enchi, and then like the then you get the head albino in there. So. Yeah, I you know I personally love albinos. 
Yeah, it I, brightens everything up. It's nice. Brightens up and brings in white. A lot of flaking from the bottom. Yeah, I'm hoping this girl goes this year, too. She's one of those snakes that, you know, eats every other time. It's like... <laughs> Gotta love yeah. them. Yeah. Oh. Um, I forget what else. Yeah, because this is the empty chocolate trick. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, strong entry, though. No kidding. Well, that... Yeah, just, lot. Wow. The chocolate darkens it right up, brings the pattern right over across the belly, which is kind of wow. cool. You know what I mean? Like the yeah, alien yeah. heads go right over. Yeah, that's pretty much... That's pretty interesting to see those two side by side, see what that chocolate will do. Yeah. Like, that's why... That's why it was kind of cool that you here we, that you just showed that one right there, you know. And that's just the you can see the darking, like the darker it it gave yeah, it. Yours is a lot more that brings out the gold and that. That's amazing. Yeah, but I like. See, I thought, but you can definitely now it confirms there's definitely entry trick in here. But I can see like pretty much the same pattern almost. Yeah. Yeah, wow. But these are sisters. That other one was a, is uh, her brother. You know, so you can have a very basic looking, like, I don't think this trick, if this didn't have Enchi in it or chocolate, I don't think it would have been as busy as that one. Yeah. You know. But, yeah, that's, you got, I love the trick team. <laughs> yeah, I got a couple of them off. See this one can come out. Uh, and what's up, Gerald? I know you're gonna like this tricks, tricks, tricks. <laughs> uh, this is one of my favorite ones that I hatched. Oh, hold on. Like a trick granite possible Ooh. at orange ghost, and it's got that really crazy dorsal pattern. Damn, I, lo yeah, I love the granite gene. I have like four or five granites and absolutely love it. Yeah, it's that. a game changer with trick. It just adds so much to the pattern. Oh, hell yeah. That is like awesome. Yeah, so I, just, uh, I paired this girl with a, what, this is with my trick B hat orange go. So hopefully we'll get super trick. Orange goes out of this with the granite, and I mean, hopefully, something will just absolutely get knocked out of the park with this. Yeah, that's going to be awesome. You, yeah, you're in a good uh, spot to be making a lot of super tricks. Yeah, and it, it all came about just from you know just following something that I liked. So I'm glad it's kind of all coming together right now at the same time that there's a lot of interest in Trek. Yeah. I mean, I still do it anyways, but it's nice to have people actually like what you're doing. Even though, once again, she is in shed. But you know this girl. Oh, wow. So that, that is that the trick? No. Yeah, the Lemon Blast trick. Is that the one that's had pie, possible had albino? Oh, no, yeah, no, no. the one I got a year uh, or so. No, I got her just as a uh, pastel pinstripe trick. Okay, because I thought I had sold you in the Cabela's parking lot. This is funny how we have to like reference oh. things like that. <laughs> Department store parking lots where we meet. Yeah, the. Um, that was a trick. Yeah, that's, that was that pastel trick. 100% uh, hep pied, 50% albino, or some, yep. vice versa. Yeah, unfortunately, she was in that rack system. No, no, that's too bad. Yeah, that's she was being bred to uh, pied head albino. I was, she was my, yeah, I was hoping to get albino pied tricks off her. And. Yeah, she was. She got huge. She was like twenty two hundred grams. No, no, no. Yeah, I got three of those. Three girls from that clutch. One of them is finally like 
probably going to go this year. And I got two other trick pastels that are just, uh, they're around like 1500 grams and kind of they'll, they'll get with the program eventually, but not there yet. Yeah. Once again, she's in shed too. <laughs> this is, and I, I honestly think I th this looks like it has the granite in there. I don't know if this was in the pairing there. This is that pastel trick. Oh yeah. 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 I recognize but that one. Wow, that's nice. She is. She's a little pickier of an eater. She don't eat during shed at all. Like a week before shed and a week after shed. But. No, that's a great pattern on that. Yeah, I absolutely love her. Like, and everyone, she is usually bright, bright yellow. Not this dull color. Oh, but, yeah, I think I was looking through some pictures I had on uh, you can Facebook tell you can... for my phone. I was like, oh, my God. Yeah, I remember that one. Yeah, that. she <laughs> is. Right now, she is my favorite trick I have. Well, it's hard be besides Zeus. Zeus is my all-time favorite. Is that the one you got from Corey? Yeah. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, it's so much easier just to say Zeus than what he actually is. Six jeans and it's just a mouthful. <laughs> I don't know how you keep track of some of these morphs. Dude, you know, I have the worst memory, but when it comes to snakes, dude, I remember every single, like, you could go into my collection, pull a snake out, show it to me, and I can tell you everything about that. Her, their, her his name, the morph, what the pairings were, even through my hatchlings. It's just, I don't know, good memory of them. Even if they're normals. I can tell. Do you use any sort of computerized program? For no, I wish. I, uh, I, I got to do something like that because this is like probably my seventh year breeding and things are starting to just kind of get further and further away. Yeah, um, see, I have I have these. Oh, yeah. And, you know, this will tell – I don't know the parents. I didn't produce this one, but okay. – uh, but even my clutch cards, I uh, um, I have like the the code, the date that they laid, the pre lay shed, all that, the father, the um, uh, mother. And then on the back, when they lay, I write down what they had in their code number for each oh, okay. baby, and then I put it in a folder. So uh, that's it. Yeah, I'm old school. No, I hear. I just do. I write the same. Just basically write down. Where you can yeah. see them. A chicken scratch there. Sable head clown. <laughs> goes female. Then like a clutch number. And then on the back, I just stick more information. Yeah, I'm horrible. I had somebody else write all mine just because oh. I have horrible handwriting. It's just, it just gets worse as you get older too. Sometimes I write down. That's notes mine. Like, what? That's mine. So <laughs> it's yeah. like. Those are my originals, you know, when I first did it, because I always wanted color coded because of Emily. And she, she yeah. started when she was four years old. And I always told her when we're breeding, we do not open the pink tubs, you know, because I don't, you know, females, when they get into their feeding frenzy, oh, yeah. I don't want her to open up and get a face full of snakes. So yeah, definitely not. Yeah. So that's why we went with the color coded, you know, males get the blue camo and our yeah. clutch cards get the gray camo i have a list on my wall that's something i'm gonna do just get blue and pink stickers and put it that way i just know like even i don't have to open up the tub to figure out what size rats going in there just yeah at this point it's like trying to be more streamlined too the less time i spend in here doing maintenance the more time i have to enjoy the animals yeah that's the thing is we hold ours all the time like we're always holding them you know yeah. it's hard not to <laughs> Yeah, I know. It's, they're cool animals. Yep. It's not during this breeding season, though, because Emily still wants to hold some of them, you know, the adult yeah. females, because they're bigger. You know? Yeah, that's why I ended up getting more snakes when I first started, because I was like, oh, the snakes are in shed. Well, if I get more, there's more available. And that. <laughs> I've never heard that theory before, but that's a good one. I like it. It's a horrible like theory. It. That's how I ended up with, like, 100 snakes. Yeah. So, what, how many you got now? Uh, I think it's probably like eighty. 
Um, I got rid of some over the past month. Once I get rid of rehome, but you know, I, have, right. I already have eggs in the incubator. I'm expecting eggs as early as tomorrow and coming through the next few weeks. So, heck yeah. Uh, huh? this will be a good year. I think last year I hatched out a ton of like double and possible triple head stuff. Yeah. So, a lot of the stuff that I have in my in my snake room right now or that I made last year, you know, just pretty much is, you know, normal exactly like that. I have like a, a ton of animals that are great, but they're all normal double and triple hats. So yeah, but dude, the hats going a lot of play with them. Yeah. I mean, it'll pay off for sure. It's just, it's just, I don't know. This is the first year I've done all creating all the hats in the past. I always wanted to have some like visual prizes in my hand. I'm like, I gotta just be smart, plan for the future. Yep. I like I tell everybody, I consider it like chess. You know, you want to plan five moves ahead. Well, you want, each year is a move, so you want to plan five years ahead. Yeah, that's good thinking. You know, that's why, like, when I first started, I bought visual females and a crazy male, or I bought a bunch of single gene females and normals, and I bought one heavy hitter male just to make the hats, you know? That was smart, because I started, I was just collecting, so there were, like, years where, it was probably, like, four or five, maybe four years before I decided to start breeding, and then I'm like, oh, I have a collection, but I didn't really plan for the future. Yep. So, I mean, it is what it is. I enjoy it. I enjoy it still. So, oh yeah, a lot, a lot of people knock people who want to say like, "Oh, I want to breed," but I mean, if you're if you're being smart about it, there's nothing wrong with that. No, no. I mean, I can honestly say, Emily and I, we soon as I bought my first snake, there we went out and bought Queen Miranda. And once again, they're all in shit. <laughs> I'm not doing good. This is our actually first, first snake we ever had. We've ever bought together. This was Emily's. We bought it at the X in uh, PetSmart. Oh, wow. Just a normal. Wow. You know. But yeah. I wanted to, she wanted to get rid of all the snakes and get I can get rid of all the fish and get snakes. So you know, oh. and once I just yeah, and then once we decided to buy you know, the first expensive one, that's when it's like, hey, we're going to do this as a business, you know, yeah. and it's worth it, you know, it's fun. You get to meet so many new people. Yeah. Yeah. You know? I don't, I don't, this is like, it's a real hobby, you know, 10 years of doing this, you meet a ton of people and just, I've never been so into anything before. Like I ran a, my own moving company, which was totally encompassing, but this is something I actually do for pleasure. And it's nice to actually, Come down here multiple times a day and just do something you enjoy. I mean, some yep. people don't have hobbies, which is sad. You know? <laughs> yeah. It's relaxing in the snake room, you know? Oh, God, like, yeah. I tell people this is my, what you call a man cave, I guess. This is mine. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's pretty much this is the space that's allotted for my manliness in here. And I feel like <laughs> I, was, you know, I guess yeah, some, some CDs and stuff, but... Yeah, I had a TV, but the Tegu tank, the Tegu enclosure was too big to have the TV there. So, bye bye TV. Okay, yeah, I keep on looking at the uh, like those black water monitors. Those things are amazing, but I mean, you pretty much need a, a room in your house just for that. For one, yeah. Even though I haven't brought her out in a while. What's not cooking? And she's in shape. Wow, it's horrible. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Wow. Yeah, she is. Wow, look at the tongue on that thing. Wicked friendly. Oh, that's got an adorable face. Oh yeah, there. We brought her to uh, Emily's school, and uh, they had um, she'll cooperate. Keep her on for a little while. Might as well. But um, so uh, 
You want to show off a couple of uh, the, the short, short tails? Wow. Yeah, I can honestly <laughs> say, dude, I I love Emily. That's what Emily wanted to get into. She didn't want the uh, um, ball pythons. She wanted the short tails. But then the more I uh, started watching the videos on them, and I'm like, well, let's go with ball pythons. You know, they're I've had them before, and you know they're a little bit smaller. You know, yeah, it's a good place to start. I, I think it, starting with a short tail might be a mistake for some people. I mean, they're, they're not as forgiving as husbandry errors. Um, they obviously need more space. Yeah, the the amount of like urine and poo that comes out of them <laughs> you, can't, you can't just ignore them because it, it's overwhelming for them in that enclosure uh yeah let me grab some what well, you say that it's funny because uh i was talking to uh eric from exotic design reptiles and i told yeah. him I, you know, i'd love to have berms or a retake and he's like yeah but they're nice but you get a bunch of them he's like it's a lot of work he's like you figure how big that snake is that drops a big turd you know a lot of cleanup. No, like no. Somebody snuck into your house at night and took a poop. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> My father, the first time he ever saw it, that's exactly what he said. He's like, wow, that's a big turd for a snake. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, this Ooh. is a python curtis. I mean, they used to be called a black blood, obviously because it's black. Um, now it's recognized as a separate species. But there's a couple of different variations of these. This guy will just continue to get dark. Um, they're also very calm, too. Like the Python oh. Curtis tend to be more level headed, and they're also an aggressive feeder. So huh. whenever I take this, open this snake's tub at night, it, it's you, God knows what's going to happen. <laughs> when you get her out, she's, she's good. And I oh. think the snake is. Uh, Probably three years old at this point. That's beautiful. Yeah, I mean, you see, like, they're just, they're undeserving of their uh, reputation for being mean. I think a lot of that came from people keeping them too hot. They get, they can get irritable when they're too hot. And if you try to keep them the same temps as, like, a ball python, it's not going to work so out. So they like it. What temperature do they like? So you could keep... Some people just keep their snake room at like say 82 degrees with no hot spot, and it's fine for these. Oh, huh. um, yeah. I mine's at you know 76 to 80 degrees for ambient temp, and then I give them a hot spot of like 82 to 84, and they seem to do fine. Nice. Uh, so, yeah, it looks nice and healthy, that's for sure. Oh, yeah. You do nothing but eat. Uh, <coughs> nice. Now, uh, do you do live or frozen thawed? Uh, these all take frozen thawed. Um, yep. There's actually one short tail I have that takes live, but I feel like eventually they'll all switch over to that. Yeah. Right. Dude, I, I absolutely love the short tails. Yeah, I can show you a different one over here. A little bit different. Let's go uh, I like now the matrix. That's a short tail, right? Or is that a blood? Oh, uh, yeah. That, so that would be, well, you see, like, a sh they're all underneath the umbrella of like short tail. Then you have Bronger's My, Curtis, and Brighton Steeny. So oh, the cool. matrix is a Bronger's My morph, which is actually, it's basically het ivory. Much like the ball pythons, you have ivory is pretty much an all white snake, you know, yellow. Banding down the down the middle. Yeah. Um, the sh the short tail ivories also have like a black blocky pattern to go along with that dorsal pattern. So that's basically it. It's a it's a, it's a morph. All right, let's see who's not gonna take a chunk out of me. <laughs> there. Oh. I yeah, the Husband Tree Pro there is awesome. I'd love to get it. Ooh, that, that is beautiful. Yeah, this is another Python Bronger's My. 
And this came from Kevin Martyr. I didn't get it directly from him, but this is a Martyr line cross with the VPI Super Stripe. Damn. The name Super Stripe there. Yeah, I love that red. Uh, this is this is pretty toned down for him right now. I mean, they go through uh, you know phases where they like you know so, quote unquote like fire up. Oh uh, yep. You open that top and it's just like oh my god that's amazing. <laughs> I actually I got this guy off a of Craigslist. Really? Uh, yeah, it was right at the beginning of the pandemic. Somebody listed him. It was in Vermont. And, you know, I was like, I don't know, I don't know. And then it's beautiful, but I was like, screw it. Just drive out there and get it. And yeah, really Sometimes cool. you just got to do it. Yeah. I mean, you know, you're not going to get it just sitting in your living room. So, Nope. You know, that is beautiful. See, that's something that I would want to get this is with cool. those, like those colors and stuff. Well, I know when uh, you have babies, I know I'm going to get one. Oh, hell yeah. I mean, it's, it's a tough wait for these to, like, this guy could breed now, but I don't have any females that are ready to go. So how big does a female have to get, B? Well, that's a good question. Because that other one, I mean, I, I don't know short tails, but that other one looked pretty good size, that female, that black one. Yeah, she's a, that's a 2019 I mean, think they usually take, I believe, four to five years before, you know. So it's like a boa? Yeah. Um, and there's also a lot of people are realizing now that we've been overfeeding these animals. Like they, the idea was, you know, a, a short tail or a blood python is this massively thick animal. And I mean, it's just it's not healthy for the animal. So people are yeah. feeding them a little bit smaller. Um, like that red one is a male. Like that's the biggest I'd want a male to get. You know, there's no reason for the male to be huge. He's not going to carry eggs. Yeah, true. Uh, Might as well be a little bit healthier. Yeah. yeah. I had a, I bought a blood python from Nerd years ago. And it passed away after like six years. I didn't really know what I was doing. I mean, I kept it alive for six years. But, you know, it was just huge because I just kept on feeding it. And in the end, that probably contributed to its early demise. Yeah, I always say, like, my first year, I was feeding all my females. <laughs> I opened that tub up, and if they were hungry, i give them one. I, you know, I fed them, some of them ate two or three times in that one week and stuff. And I thought that's what you had to do. And they all got huge and bred them, but I had a lot of deformities. And oh, really? I, had a lot of, I had a lot of fat snakes, you oh. know. And, uh... Then um, my second year, it was you get one rat a week. That's it. You only get your one rat a week. I don't care if you want more, you know. And I had more clutches, and whoo, I only had uh, two deformities last year. Oh, well, that's a lot. And out of 31 right? clutches, so it was – I just thought it was better. You know, the snakes are healthier. They, were, they weren't fat. Yeah, God, yeah. Mm. This doesn't show off his colors very well. I mean, if you've seen pictures of him online, you know, his mm. head is actually very orange. So this is a different version of that first black snake. There's another Python Curtis. He's an orange head. And he's also 66% for T-positive caramel albino. So I have a female to breed him with. Nice. Now, is that the picture you had with both? They both had the orange heads on it. Yeah, that's the that's the corresponding. Actually, this is the female. The other one's the male. Ah, oh, no. Nah. Yeah, I just saw that picture today. I thought yeah. that was a good picture. Yeah, this is good. You know, it's, this reminded me too. These are actually pretty vocal animals. I know when uh. You know, when you, you first start keeping snakes, everyone tells you, like, oh, respiratory infections or whatnot, which you should watch out for. But these snakes, they don't wheeze, but they'll whistle at you, they'll breathe at you, they'll huff and puff. So it, it's kind of oh, easy. Yeah. To get at first, you're like, oh, no, what's wrong with this thing? Like, that red one I took out, 
is just nonstop, just making noise at me constantly. And it's just, <laughs> it's just want to be here. Dude, I love the patterns on them. Yeah, this one's nice. I mean, this is a great example of this. And, and definitely wow, PC. I agree. It's just a... I'll grab that uh, caramel albino version. Ooh, looks like someone's been uh, eyeballing your uh, Mojave Pied Mail. Why do you say that? Uh, one of the comments here, the uh, toast, toast Dumas, a Damus. I'm not good oh, at that. Toastradamus. Toastradamus. Yeah. Um, I can pull that out in a second, sure. Uh, <laughs> is that the one you brought to the uh, expo? I have, I have one from the show that was available or is available. Then there's another one that I just I'm keeping because it's Ooh. just ridiculous. What so, like that? Yeah. So this, like I said, that that one I just had out is hat possible hat for this. So hopefully, we'll no. That, so that's the caramel. Yeah, this is a T positive caramel albino for the Python Curtis. Oh yeah, I love the orange head. Yeah, these two are stunning examples. Like a lot of them, you see, like you know, they're named orange heads, but they, you know, that it does not rock them like these. These are pretty crazy. I got these both from Selective Origins, and uh, Matt Turner runs that, and I think also Michael Ogle at Nirvana Reptiles. I mean, they they just they're just that's you. That you produced her? Yeah. Um, they're just years ahead of the game. I mean, they have just incredible stuff. And they're both great guys. Right, yeah, the only good thing about that, you get to see what stuff looks like, though, when people are ahead of you. Oh, yeah. And you can get other ideas <laughs> and, you know, plan on not wearing where not to go. Um, let me just I'll show you this. Now, this is the Mojave pie that, no, that's not, yeah, this, here you are. This is the Mojave pie that I hatched out maybe 2018. Oh, so that's the one you're keeping. That's, a, yeah. it's got a lot of padding on it. Oof. Yeah, this thing is pretty crazy. I mean. I'd like to the, see pinstripe in there. Pinstripe Mojave pie, yeah. Because. They do basically almost the same, just the pin site brightens that right up. It's like looking in a mirror trying to show snakes. I know. <laughs> Ooh, that is nice. Yeah, thanks. Ooh. Yeah, he's Beautiful. Cool. Definitely. I agree, Peekapoo Morse. Yeah, oh, see, that's like a perfect, that is a perfect white and pattern combo right there. Perfect amount of white. Yeah, it's pretty crazy when this thing came out of the egg. I was like, just shocked. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's one of those ones you do the Billy dance with. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that yeah. is nice. Most of them are uh, higher white. Yeah, that's why I just, you know, that one's got tons of pattern on it. Because the one that you brought to the expo, was uh, that got a lot of uh, looks. Everybody liked that one. Which is hard not to. I mean, it's a Mojave Pied. How do you not like them? Yeah, it's kind of crazy. We're still here. Um, yeah, this guy. I, I, I'm not going to lie to you. How many people stopped and looked at him? Oh, yeah. Yeah. See, that's what your typical Mojave Pied looks like. Yeah, a lot more white. Yeah. Oh, it's so nice. So clean looking. There we go. Yeah. You know, I mean, I'd just be keeping him of thought for that other one I just pulled out. Yeah, <laughs> obvious reasons. Yeah, it was a it was a cool snake, but can't keep them all. It's crazy. So, yeah, I agree with that. Here. Mojave Cypress, uh, Cypress, that's a good one. That was your first snake. That's an awesome first snake right there. Yeah, 
Yeah, that's nuts. Yeah, Mojave Cypress. I love the Cypress Jean. I would take her out, but I'm pretty sure she's gravid. My uh, granite Cypress. Unfortunately, okay. my single jean Cypress was in that other rack. So I don't have her anymore. I'll show you some other stuff here. Um, I have my light. Let's grow out. Anybody have any questions for Andrew? Um, any questions on short tails or ball pythons? You know. Um, now, do you have stuff on Morph Market right now? Yeah, there's slim pickings. I think I've got Mojave's up there. Um, I have. We'll be there in 45 minutes to pick them up. <laughs> uh, I, have like, I have like two double hat orange ghost clown females, and there's another chocolate sable. No, sorry, sable hat clown, possible hat orange ghost. You know, that is fine. I'm surprised you still have those two girls, too. The yeah. double hat. I do. I never. I have the two uh, double head albino clowns. You know, it's like I guess nobody wanted. Everybody wanted the normal males. I mean, it's tough too. I mean, you have to who you know, comes by that wants to breed versus yeah. You know, someone there was years ago. There was a guy at the uh, New Hampshire show. He was selling what he claimed were yellow bellies that would produce paradox ivories. And he had a bunch of the Paradox mm -hmm. Ivories and there. It was like, you know, an ivory ball python with the uh, normal patches coming through. It was amazing. Yep. Yeah. I forget. It was like $600 for like the 1.1 1 .1 pair. Like I wasn't into breeding and I was like, I just, I, I wish I had gotten them, but. Yeah. The only thing is, is they proved over and over that it's not hereditary. Like it's not. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's just I I produced a couple paradoxes on my bananas now. Yeah, I've had a couple. I've I've not any stunners, but yeah, mine was mine just had like a bunch of black spots on its face and stuff. <laughs> yeah, like a smudge somewhere. Right here. Yeah, nothing big, big. But that is beautiful. What is that now? So this is a T negative Bronger's my, and. He'll continue to darken up until he's like red as a skittle. Oh, really? Yep. So be nice. Oh, dude. All that white in there will stay white, and pretty much everything else is going to turn red. So. All right. So that's probably going to. That's probably one of my favorite ones there. Then. Yeah, this is a really nice animal. Oh, I love the, the colors. colors. Yeah, it's just things awesome. I got from Mark Kirkpatrick at uh, he's Bloodborne Reptiles. I think he's taken a break for a few years. He has a business or something else that is taking up all of his time. So I think he got rid of a lot of his animals. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Yeah. A... The colors are just beautiful. And I know that they got to be better in person than. Oh, yeah. This time I can see what I'm showing here. And it's like, this doesn't really show it. But everyone yeah. knows how that goes with. Snakes, cameras. Yeah, whatever. but I will say that it's more likely it looks better than what you're looking at, though. Okay, yeah, quite possibly. Because I've done a lot of times where I couldn't, I'm on my computer and stuff, and it's, I can see it, but when I actually watched my video after, it looked way better. Way better. Oh, yeah. All right. It's good to know. Oh. Um, what else do I have over here? That would be, I'll show you my favorite one. She's kind of crazy. <laughs> Everybody likes seeing that. Oh, God. Oh, that ain't good. She's already started. <laughs> Come here, girl. Come here. Oh, she's, she's just nervous. She's super nervous as a, yeah, not going to cooperate. So, I mean, this is just an, another, well, not just another, but this is a line bread red. And See, I so, thought that was the Matrix. That's not a Matrix? So, sometimes Matrix, or really, the only way you can tell is because they'll have a pink tongue. Oh. I, I, well, maybe that, maybe it's just Matrix is the only one I know. Sometimes they'll have like a pixelated pattern, but that yeah, it's kind of crazy. I, I can't always tell what a Matrix is. I'm not going to lie. I almost... Uh, 
like I love the contrast, but I like the colors of that other one. Ooh. Oh, the T negative I just had on there. Yeah. Dude, that is nice. That's like something that people want their clown ball pythons to look like. <laughs> <laughs> Well, me, that's what I want my clown ball pythons to look like right there. Yeah, she's, she's actually pretty calm right now. Like, she used to just stick her, like, lady parts out at me, squirt, just Ugh. try to bite. Never bit me, but just go nuts. Um, well, you're making uh, what people heard bad about, you know, short tails. You're making it look good, you know. Actually, or, yeah. I think it's all about the good husbandry, just keeping them cool enough. Yeah. And this is a yeah, common, combination of Lily, Martyr, and Red Bull lines. Dude, that is so nice. Oh, thanks. You're making me want to get one in the worst way. <laughs> so I know Paul and Lisa from PL, they just got a couple. Oh, yeah. They bought a, a Golden Eye Het T negative. And I don't know what the other one was. I'm just guessing. Well, they just they just picked up two more. Oh wow! Okay, yeah, there you go. Yeah, on uh, I guess Craigslist. So was it? Yeah. I'm not gonna guess what it was, but yeah, I have yeah, a, yeah. should have one more coming. Actually, it's gonna be my first Brighton Steeny, Brighton Steiny, however it's pronounced. Um, it's gonna have a super orange head, and it's a super stripe. So I mean, it's in Minnesota, so. I'm not gonna count my eggs before they hatch on that one. Yeah. Oh. So, oh, a little bit flighty. Try. I'm just like staring at the snake and not the actual camera. Yeah, but not like cool, cool, like super cold. <laughs> Someone asked, did you just say keep them cool? <laughs> uh, if you had a snake room that was just 82 degrees ambient temperature the whole time, you wouldn't need a hot spot. But you don't want to, it's not like ball python temperatures, not like 88 to 90 or anything like that, or else they can get very agitated. Yep. Um, a lot of their, a lot of their bad reputation came from when they were first being imported into the country and people were like, oh, you know, they're coming from Malaysia. It's hot. It's super humid. So people were keeping them, you know, 88, 90 degrees, dripping wet cage. And that's, that's just not what they need. So it, it was a preconception that they were really um, disposed to getting respiratory infections. And yep. then in hindsight, it was like, oh, it's because you're keeping the thing in basically a pool of water all the time. So, yeah. But we, like, we all learn. What's that? So we do learn. Yeah. Yeah. They, like If this was 20 years ago. I wouldn't have any of these animals, you know, it's a lot of hard work went into, uh, went, in, went into it from the predecessors to be able to have things like this and know how to take I'm, care of it because, I mean, that's frustrating to get an imported animal and to have the thing get sick and die on you. Oh, yeah. Well, it's like, uh, oh, was it 2001, I think it was, or something like that, right out of high school. I, uh, I bought a desert ball python, uh, with the morph that the females can't have, you know, they yeah. get egg bound and stuff. Oh, yeah. And uh, I bought her and they told me to keep her on cedar uh, chips. Nice. Yeah. Oh, it helps keep the smell down. <laughs> like, you know, nowadays, like that's, whoo, no, yeah. <laughs> don't do that. Yeah. You know. Huh? I said the smell of your dead snake. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I will say. I mean, I never had a problem. I mean, she lived till three years, three and a half. Uh, I ended up breeding her with my buddy's normal, and yeah. she and she got egg bound. Now I know. Yeah, yeah I wish I never did because she was an awesome snake. I mean, I used to take her everywhere. I yeah, I would have done the same thing. I remember the first time I saw like a desert pinstripe at a show. You know, it was like it was a like a female. It was like hundred fifty dollars, like ten years ago. It was just like, oh my god, this thing's amazing. But it was like, oh, like I, you can't breed it. So yeah, but beautiful. It's a it's a beautiful morph. Oh, it is the stuff that that does. I honestly, I wanted to get a male desert just to make a couple thing projects. You know, and mm -hmm. you know the females are great as long as they're pets only. You yeah. know. 
You, it's not like you you know for a fact you're not going to be selling them for a crazy amount of money, uh, you know, because they are strictly pets only, you know. But what they make or what they do is insane, you know. Who like, I love that. Any idea? Huh? Who was the first person that isolated that gene, do you know? Oh, I have no idea. I haven't, I haven't done much research in it. You know, I got... Yeah, that's what discouraged me. I wish I, I hate to say it, but I wish I got just a normal snake back then instead of her, because I would have been breeding ball pythons. Yeah, true. You know, yeah. and I got discouraged because she died, and it was devastating for me. You know, things Cause... happen too. Like I know people you know, that buy snakes, you know, thirty years ago, and then you know you go through life changes when you're younger, and you get rid of the animals, not realizing that. 20 years later, had you kept those animals, God knows what you'd be breeding right now. So. Like, that's why I, like, I get amazed with Emily. I mean, I think about Emily when she gets like our age and stuff. It's like, who can you imagine what she's going to be making? Yeah. You know, quad six visuals are going to be normal. You know, oh, this is my uh, platform right here is my quad visual and <laughs> now i'm putting like 20 genes into it and yeah you know. pretty amazing what's happened with ball pythons over even the past 10 years oh hell yeah oh boy all right i don't know if she's gonna be me oh whoa oh yeah you okay oh. yeah i almost got in the face yeah i was gonna take out this girl She's got a little bit of stuck shed. I'm hoping she don't bite me. She's uh, she's 39 years old. Oh wow! Yeah, that's crazy. Don't do it. <laughs> oh but my god! Wow. She's losing her color. She's Still starting to show, but looks pretty good though. Oh yeah, she eats eats great. You know, she uh, she had a clutch two years ago, I guess. How did you come across her? Um, she is. Whoa, come on! Ah, uh, I gotta move her. She's up too high. <laughs> um. I was watching uh, Gentleman Snakes for a couple of years, and uh, he's now out of it, and he ended up giving them to me. So I guess I'm stuck with that. Was his first snake? Ooh, that's nice. Oh, so this is interesting. This is a zigzag lily. A zigzag um, lily. Yep. And so the lily. Let me see if I can. Lily brings in all this black. So again, this is a python bronze of my. So just in case anyone's keeping notes. So and the Lily brings in the black. It also brings in red. The zigzag cleans things up. So it's a little bit strange that this snake is so highly patterned. It's pretty unique. Oof, I like it. And that's like. All this chain patterning down here. That's all the lily with the black. It's just it's uh, like a spot nose, yellow belly, red stripe, whoa. black pastel. <laughs> Dude, that is sick. That is my favorite one you've pulled out so far. Uh, thank you. Yeah, this is this is another one from Matt Turner at Selective Origins. He put it up on his his Facebook page one day as available said he's probably going to regret it. And I mean, as soon as I saw this animal, it was like that. Just yep. got to grab it. Yep. Yo, that is, yep. That is my oh, focus. Going out of focus. Yeah. Oh, all right. I'm just going to adjust the camera back to where it was before. Maybe oh, there you go. Oh, come here. Yo, that is, yeah, that's it. When you have babies, I want one of that. <laughs> Yeah, this thing's pretty sweet. Hopefully, she'll what? get even redder. I just love the busyness of it. Oh, yeah, that's that just a great animal. 
can feel something in her butt, so she probably put her away. <laughs> Before you oh, wear it. They, they retain, they have like urates. They have these massive chunks of what I believe is calcified bone and whatnot from the digestive tract. And you know, that stuff, it, it pretty much, I, I think, blocks them up a little bit. So when they do, when it does come out, that's why you have massive man poops that you have to handle. <laughs> so that is, I did. That's my favorite one, hand down. Yeah, and that's a zigzag, zigzag lily, zigzag lily. I'm gonna have to remember that one. It's where there's a there's a zigzag lily on fauna classifieds. And I think it's another one from Matt Turner, but it just doesn't look anything like this. So I just like, yeah, I would want one from now. That's a female, right? Yes. Now, do you need now? Is it recessive or nope? So these are both, I don't want to use the wrong term of co dominant, but nothing yeah. recessive in this. Wow. And that impressive and nothing recessive. Yeah, that's. And a comp snake, too. So, Got a you, they, I haven't seen one even think about being aggressive. Towards oh, I don't want to take, take that one out. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> she's, she's gotten calmer, but. Yeah, there was uh, one in uh, New Hampshire. <clears throat> you said there was one in New Hampshire? I just fell off the the forty two year old I mean the oh, no, no. year old girl. <laughs> Her face. Um there was remember at the expo there, like four or five tables down, there was someone that had the Oh god, yeah, that's Elijah Armas. Aramis. Yeah. I'm probably murdering the poor guy's Juggernauts. Name. Juggernaut reptiles, yeah. He's yeah. top notch stuff. He's amazing. Amazing stuff. Um Yeah. That was yeah. a pretty cool looking animal. Yeah, that yeah. He had. A huge T negative there. Yeah. So he had fed that thinking it was a female and then it ended up being a male. But yeah, so oh, that, really? was, that was a good representation of like the, the female blood python size could be. I mean, just yeah. huge animal. Yeah, that was in long too. That was a good size. That was, I can say that's probably the longest. That was actually, I can probably say that's probably the biggest blood I've seen or a short tail. I had I personally like that size, but I haven't seen anything that size lately. Yeah, that, that that was it was a good size. I liked it. Yeah, he is amazing stuff. He does uh he breeds ball pythons too. I guess Peter Call and Stan Cheris. Peter Call uh, isolated Stan. the desert gene there. Oh, thank you. I would say Gerald knows tons. He is a little information person. <laughs> it's nice. He does a lot of research, you know. And that's the key thing about this whole thing is research, research, research. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot. You end up wasting years if you don't know what you're doing. And that's regretful. Yeah. You can still enjoy yourself, but it is a lot of money. Um, yeah. That's one thing I like about the YouTube now. You know, it's it's huge. You can learn so much. It's just the internet in general. Like if this was if this was twenty years ago, like you'd graduate high school or college, and unless you did like signed up for continuing education classes, that was pretty much all you were really gonna know. Yeah. And now it's just what do you want to know? Just look. Well, when I amazing. Yeah. When I bought my snake there, my first you know ball python, you know when I. Years and years ago, I went out and bought a little book that had information on. And I can tell you now, I, I need to go get that. I still have that book. Emily's got it in her room. But the morphs that they have in there, I wish I could find. Which one do you have? I got. I got. Nope, not that one. I think it was that one right there. Oh, nope. Never yeah. I think it was. They have, yeah. they have a golden stripe in there. Oh, this is the Kevin McCurley one. Okay. Oh no, this one. This one was from, I think eighty four or eighty five. Okay. Yeah. Like Information. 
Yeah, dude, that right there. Where is that morph? What is that one? What do they call it? It's called a jungle. So there you go. We don't. Just, like, I mean, that's that's amazing. It is, dude. Like, I that's the same picture that was in my book. Yeah, there's it's, another one. Oh wow! Yeah, there's some. That looks like a cypress down the bottom, your bottom left, I'm guessing. Right here? Nope. The other yeah. side. Yeah. Uh, they just call that an ex outstanding example of a striped ball python. <laughs> that's all you, you know need what? to know about that one. <laughs> See, that, that was... That's, uh, that's amazing. And again, that's just striped. That, that's by no, David that one... Barker. Oh, wow. These are all photographed by David Barker. All right. Uh, Dave, Tracy Barker, they run VPI. They've right. been playing, doing crazy stuff for a long time. These are actually all his photographs. I did not know that. Huh. Jungle Tiger. Wow. That's... Ooh, what is that? Nenchi Yellow Belly Calico? Uh, it's a variant. A variant. <laughs> Why don't you label some of your snakes variant at the next show? See how they sell. <laughs> I should do that. Put oh, yeah. So yeah. All right. I don't know where the one. Come on. No, it's gonna be in this one. That is too damn funny. Yeah, because I saw one that. Uh, yeah, that banding on this guy. Yeah. Ooh, that's sick. Yeah. Well, where is that? Uh, that's just labeled ball python by, you know, time for kids, snakes. But see, that's what I was saying. Like, I had those books and I'm going through and it's like, you know, nowadays it's like, where the heck are these morphs? Where did they go? I, I would guess those are grabbed all out of the, uh, out of the wild immediately and probably kept in Africa. I mean, who's that guy in Africa that, like the ball python god? Oh, I don't know. Oh, what is that dude's name? I I can't. Think I know of I've had numerous people message me and ask me if I want to uh, import a bunch of ball pythons, but uh, I thought I I almost did. I wanted to get a bunch of imports and you know raise them up and see. But I was talking to uh, Mike at Florida Florida Reptile Ranch and. He was just telling me, Jake, you want to make sure you quarantine real good. You know, oh, make yeah. sure. Like, you want a whole separate building. You don't want them even in the same building just because they have so many more diseases, bacteria, or yeah, stuff right. that we don't even see and that our snakes are not made to handle it. Yeah. You know? we'll wipe out an entire collection doing something like yeah. that. I mean, you know, they're building and probably like a six-month quarantine. Not to mention uh, yeah. I bacterial and anti-parasite and i've never imported a snake or bought an imported one just because I mean, it's just a different ball game don't bite me girl don't bite me i got one. Oh, nice this is oh an import from i bought it off craigslist no kidding but it was uh an import from freedom breeder Oh, yep. I've looked at their website plenty of times. I'm like, oh, wow, yeah, grab something like that. But I honestly <laughs> think it looks like a normal. <laughs> I think most of them are. I Honestly, I, I heard heard that, you know. I and mean, it kind of has like that trickish look. You know, yeah, with like. It's outlined in white and it's so black. It's, yeah, it's she's beautiful. very dark. You know. But she laid the three eggs or four eggs last year and uh, she produced well, she didn't produce her the mate did, but the that new gene that popped up her clutch was the first one. Okay. Of that. But I don't think, it, I know for a fact it didn't come from her though. <laughs> Do you there's another snake I sold you years ago it was just pretty much a normal I mean, it was kind of a dinker. It had a really funky pattern to it. Do you remember that one? I don't. 
You sure? No, sure you yeah. told me it? What's that? You sure you told me it? I think I did, yeah. It might have been, again, let's, it's in another parking lot. That's where we meet, at Sleepers. Oh, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, she, yeah, I know which one you're talking about. She is, unfortunately, was in that rack system. Okay, that sucks. Yeah, now I know. The one that was uh, almost a trick-looking one. Yeah. Yeah. I, I tried that animal once. I got nothing out of, like, six that looked anything like it. I mean, I got. Yeah, I didn't. I never got to get a clutch off her, unfortunately. Yeah, I, I think, yeah. like, that probably was just another normal. Like, somebody had that, told me that pretty much. I don't know, dude. Yeah, she, I mean, she was pretty tricky looking. Oh, yeah, dude. I look at pictures of that snake sometime. I'm like, wow. I mean, that's something, again, I wish you could keep. But having yeah. her once, I was like, all right, like, got to let somebody else try. This is. Oh. Okay. Don't fight me. They're all pretty mean right now. <laughs> this is a normal. Oh, oh I thought I was going to get it in the face. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. Wow. Super. Real. I don't know. Yeah, it's very reduced. Yeah. The guy called her three band because it had uh, where is it? Those three bands right yeah, there right. that cross over. But very have reduced. You ever, have you ever bred her? Nope. I was uh, I was building her up to <laughs> the seller. You know, I, I was going to, but she didn't go the first year. And uh, now... You know, since that whole incident, now I'm breeding. I'm going to try breeding her this year. All right. Yeah, that's a cool snake. Yeah, I don't know what it is. He called a three band. It was very reduced, you know. But she's good health. She's a big girl, you know. But she is mean. <laughs> <laughs> like, a lot of my normals are mean. <laughs> no doubt, yeah. Yeah, but they eat good, though. Yeah, that thing clearly eats very well. So I, yeah. wish I could breed my own rats and throw live in at these things sometimes instead of dealing with a frozen thawed. Just yeah, that take care of rats, which would be a problem. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I know you can't. You can't deal with the live rats, can you? No, I'm allergic to them. It's just yeah. yeah. Even when I feed the frozen thawed, I'll just put on like the latex gloves because. Sooner, like even like getting like nail scratched or something like that, like later on, my hand will just be itchy, it'll be annoying. So, yep, Our, not even worth Yeah, I was talking to someone down at Rhode Island, they got rid of all their collection because they couldn't deal with the rats, they were allergic to them. Yeah, that's like one of my greatest fears. Of, I mean, allergies change over time. I'm not hypersensitive to anything, but that would be horrible. You know, that's, yeah, that's no fun. Well. If I remember, I think that's Brian Gundy. He used to have a partner, and uh, he ended up passing away because he was allergic to uh, the rats. Oh, wow. Yeah. So it's, uh, yeah, I told the person, you know, I'm like, you don't have to get rid of snakes. Is You know, you can uh, get one of those uh, egg eaters, you know. Yeah. Have you ever so, seen those? Yeah, that's crazy when they're swallowing it. I yeah, they swallow it up and then they crush it and then they spit out the shell. I I'm not gonna lie, I almost bought some down at the Rhode Island show. Yeah, those are really cool. Dude, they were like worms, and yeah. I'm like, uh, nope, I have no place to have a worm right now. <laughs> they would literally they would squeeze in between an ARS crack. There, yeah. they're so small. I'm like. I think Brian Barczyk had that problem with uh, um, those snakes he got off uh, Miguel. I don't know. Did, which one. Um, I cannot remember what type they were. Uh, I just know I think it's huh. The Solomon Island ground boa. No, I don't. I don't know. Yeah, uh, Miguel called them. Uh, I think Lucifer or something like that. He was a very vicious snake, but he sent them over to him, and then. I think like two weeks later they uh, laid eggs, but I mean, laid wow. babies in uh, babies just crawled right out of the tub. Yeah, some of those things are like come out like the size of trout worms. Yeah, yeah, all set. That's why I couldn't do the uh, 
What's up, Dale from Acadia Balls? Tyler's Toxic Balls, what's up? Um, yeah, I can't do the little things like corn snakes. Emily is, it's so funny. She'll grab a six, seven foot bowl or 14 foot Burmese, but then she is petrified the god of snakes. <laughs> not the bigger ones, the little ones. Who yeah. does not like baby god of snakes? Scared of them. Oh, yeah, I think that's what it is. They're too quick for him. She yeah. just does not like them. Yeah. Let me uh, let me show you that boa constrictor. Oh, heck yeah. So, anybody else have any questions and uh, or anything? I don't know, Tyler or Dale, I don't know if you guys showed up, but, dude, you should go back and watch some of these snakes. Dude, he has some killer short tails. And the tricks, sir. Dale, you definitely got to go back to the beginning if you weren't here. <laughs> I know you're all about the tricks, so. Ooh, is that an IMG? Yeah, so this is the uh, IMG that's hat for Ralph Davis Reptiles Black-Eyed Annery. Ooh. So I, I, IMG also has, you know, different levels of expression. This thing's super black, super young. So, so that's going to be jet, jet black then, right? Yeah, like most likely. Like there's some pattern still in the tail. But I mean, I, I would think most of this snake will be black within a couple of years. Now, when you got him, him or her? It was a female. When you got her, did she have pattern on her? Or? Yeah. Uh, I mean, hard to describe what it is, but I mean, yeah. like she she had a head pattern. She had stuff going all the way down the back. It was still, it was like gray, almost ghosted out at that point, but it was there and now it's gone. Must be cool to watch that. Yeah, when they when they shut out, it's just amazing. There's just... I mean, it, it, there's so much iridescence in this animal. It's like soaked in I can see it. The camera's picking it up, that's for sure. Yeah, this is, so this is a snake. I'll be looking around for a, a male for her, obviously. But I really yep. like, I like the Inca stuff, but I'm still not really well-versed enough in it to understand what's what. I see, like, Da Vinci Boa has some amazing Inca stuff. Uh, the guy I got this off of, Kevin Hasley, yeah, England, he hatched out some stuff. Well, not even hatched because it's live birth, I guess. It's just birth. Some absolutely amazing boa combos. Yeah, I'm getting uh, another boa. I got one coming Thursday. Uh, where'd you go for that? Um... Oh, uh, concealed constrictors, I think it was. Okay. But uh, mainly uh, boas produced him. Oh, all right, cool. Yeah. What yeah. type is it? Um, I'd love to. It's a BCI. How's that? <laughs> okay, I'll go with that. BCI versus BCC. Yep. Yeah. You know. Like yeah, no, he's – it's nothing big. Uh, I just um, – I have my uh, one female, and I figured how I'm not going to have many clutches this year, so I figured my girl's, I don't know, she's like seven feet right now, almost eight feet, and she's good size, and uh, she's a hypo hog island heck call. Okay. So I figured I just – Get up a regular albino, you know, the call albino and a visual and breed it to her just to prove out. Yeah, I have you a know. massive uh, male call albino. I think it's a male. It was sold to me as a male. And that's another animal that was one of my first ones. I really overfed them. But yeah. I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure it's a male. Yeah. Oh, you have a visual male call? Yeah. Oh, nice. Right in front of me. I don't take that one out at night. He's just the feeding response is just insane. <laughs> I can say, see, mine, Athena, she, every, I feed her every other week. And when it comes to the day before or that day, 
Hall, you don't go in her enclosure unless you have a rat for her. <laughs> you know, any other time you can go right in there and pull her out, not a problem. But Jess, when she is, oh, I love the IMGs. Yeah, that's a great one. I mean, this yeah. animal was so angry when it came to me. I mean, it, it got shipped in basically a sardine can from Europe all the way over to California. And then they sent it back to me where it got hung up overnight in Memphis. Oh, so, yeah. And it, this is just like in November or something like that. Oh, so by the time the animal showed up, I mean, I took him out. I thought I took her out. I thought it was dead. Like it was just limp in my hand. It was, I think it was like 66 degrees was the animal's body temperature. I took with my oh. uh, water. Yeah, that's way too how cold. How do I even, I just sent, you know, this is $1,500 I sent to Europe. How do you get your money back? <laughs> and it, start, it started moving around and then, you know, put it in the quarantine rack and like peeked in like a half hour later and it was all good. Nice. Happy yeah, I've, I've been wanting to get some snakes from Europe, but it's, that that's a long trip. Yeah, the whole, yeah. It got imported by uh, Dutch Dragon Imports, and I looked into them, and, you know, it's like reviews for anything else. Like, everybody loves it, then, like, somebody had a horrible experience with it. But, I mean, I trusted the, the seller. He said he used them all the time, and it, it did. It ended up being fine. The yeah. only pickup was just, you know, FedEx leaving the thing sitting on the tarmac overnight. Yeah, that's – I've had a couple of them that uh, – well – one day, uh, it was horrible, but it, it was not, you know, their fault. They had that ice storm in Memphis, but, yeah, you know, I had a uh, angry customer because he didn't, unfortunately, I felt bad, too, because he, he wanted to get a snake for his daughter for her birthday, and he wanted it for on her birthday, and it just weren't happening. Yeah. You know, it's winter time. It's, it's hard to ship during winter. Yeah. And the animals come first. Oh, God, yeah. yeah. I had yeah. a lady, so 2020, I had a lady in Oregon, right outside of Portland, who wanted me to ship uh, a trick to her house. You know, and at that point, like, ship your reptiles was already saying, you know, only ship to the hubs because <laughs> of COVID. We don't have the staffing. And then they're having, like, the BLM riots in her town, and she still wants me to send it to <laughs> her house. And then the whole state was on fire. Like the Portland was destroyed in the summer of 2020, and this lady's still like, "No, it's fine. Just send it to my house. It'll be fine." And then, like you know, 20 minutes later, I got a message like, "Don't send the snake here. We're being evacuated. I don't think I can ever come back here." Huh. You know, sometimes yeah. you're, gonna, you're just going to tell people no and do what's right for the animal. Because yeah, I uh, that is my thing is I do not ship the houses. Uh, I've shipped one time and it made it there, but. I personally had a snake ghost rider and uh, her name was Minnie, but now her name's Sandy, but uh, Emily had to change it. <laughs> um, she, she wanted the trick to be Minnie for some reason. I don't like, okay, whatever. <laughs> but um, ghost rider and uh, Sandy, they were supposed to be at, they got shipped to my house and uh they showed up at 5.30 at night. And oh. my FedEx thing, the tracking number says they got loaded onto the truck at 7.30 in the morning. Yeah. And I'm like, so you're telling me that snake has been on that truck from 7.30 to 5 and it's like 80 degrees out today. I'm like, this is, re I was pissed. I opened that right up and it's like, holy crap, they're perfectly fine, but I just yeah. didn't like that, you know? Yeah, I definitely prefer just shipping to the hub. It's just easier. Yeah, yeah, and that's what I do tell people. You know, I will unfortunately lose a sale if I have to, but I only ship to the your local uh, hubs. There, Santa. it's just it's safer. They go in once they get there. They they usually there at like eight o'clock in the morning, eight thirty in the morning. You can pick them up, so you can yep. get them early. And when they get in, they're put in a climate controlled room. You know, so, you know, if that person doesn't come right up quick, then they're, I uh, might as well show some more off. 
I, I love the IMGs, and I know a lot of people do. <laughs> you know, but uh, yeah, I just had bad experience with it, and I'd prefer to, right, to go right to the hub. Yeah, absolutely. And especially our hub, dude. We got awesome people there. Yeah, I feel like we're lucky with Maine is less of a population, so I think they're just dealing with less of a volume of stuff coming in the morning. Like, Maybe. I, I mean... I had that one lady, dude, she took down my number in uh, she, that one that that person wanted. And she's like, you know, can we wait until the following week? She's like, I'm going to personally keep track of this package and make sure that it gets here. And if it gets held up, I'm going to make sure that they put it in a room. I'm like, awesome. You know, yeah. it, but she has uh, bearded dragons and everything. So, oh, yeah. So, that, so she understands. Yeah. So that's kind of nice. We we're lucky there. You know, she gave me the hub's number and everything. Because if you call, if you ever try calling that hub, there you can't. Oh no, yeah, it's... you can't. You literally can't get in touch with that hub. Oh no, no, it just goes to the, the customer service, wherever that might be, and yeah. Yep. Now she gave me the number to their hub just in case. And I'm like, sweet. So she's like, if you have any other questions, just call me in the morning. I'm, I work mornings and stuff. It's like, all right, good. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's nice. Yeah, it's nice seeing people that care about yeah. the animals. Yeah. You know? Because right. that is, you know, they are a living animal, you know? Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, no, I, I want to get into some, uh, I'm getting into the geckos right now. Yeah, you, you had a couple of those at the uh, the show. Yeah, I just, uh, it, it's nice to have more than just ball pythons, you know, yeah. at the show. And I personally like the geckos, you know. It's crazy that how they just sat on that light the entire time. Oh yeah, I, I, you gotta admit people's expressions are the best when they do. All of a sudden <laughs> they're looking. Oh, yeah, there's, a, there's something right there. It's like, yeah, you know, it's kind of nice. Yeah, the kids love that stuff. Yeah, and like I tell people, uh, you know, the more you hold them, they really do like being held. You know, like those ones. You saw that one at first; it was pretty jumpy, and then after you know you hold it for a while, they realize that. You know, you're not an enemy. You're not going to eat it. You know, calm right down. Yeah, just like a snake. You know, you get a ball python. It's in a ball. You know, you hold it for like an hour, and it's going to be a nice, relaxed ball python. Yeah. You know, ninety percent of the time. So you're telling me earlier you got a couple eggs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we got a couple uh, gargoyle eggs. No, yeah, like ninety days to hatch was it? Yeah, well, it's like between 60, depending on the temperature. Like, they can go quite a bit. Yeah, they like 75 is a good temperature. Um, oh, wow. You'll probably get, I think, 70 days or something like that with that temperature. You know, you're hot. When you get it up to like 78, then it's your 60 yeah. days. It makes oh, a big wow. difference with temperature. They're yeah. the same. Yeah, these are my first two, pretty much. You know, what do you feed them when they come out of the egg? Just the same uh, Pangea there. Oh, yeah, the smoothie. Stuff. Yep. smoothie. Yep. Yeah, it's nice just because, you know, you've got, they don't require light. They don't require heat, you know. They're great. You can put them on your coffee table or your island in your house, and they're great, you know. Even though my gecko enclosure is huge. Mine is uh, six feet wide, two feet deep. And eight feet high, but it's got eight enclosures in it. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to fill it right up with the geckos. That's all the geckos. I want to get uh, some Lichianis next. Are those the ones that stay like flat on the glass? No, they're the, uh, the Lichianis. They get up to like uh, 14 to 18 inches long. Oh. And they're just big, just heavy body geckos. Okay. Yeah, they yeah. just uh, Emily just did her report on them. Okay, so, yeah, all right. You show me that. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Curtis cool. Curtis from Mythical Exotics has uh, the girl I want. 
How is Kevin? Uh, he's doing good. Oh. That's Kevin. And I just found out that he, because he had a clutch last year, he is a pastel cinnamon banana warmer. Wow. And he is 100% head albino. I had no idea. Is that one that, <laughs> is that one that you bred? Yeah, this is uh, this is one of our first babies we've ever had. Uh, yeah, I don't have any banana stuff. I was actually just looking at getting like banana head pie just to make some banana pie. Uh, dude, what you want is uh, like this is one that we produced. This is one that has that possible that other gene in there. Uh, this what? is a huh? Is it like banana spider clown or something? Nope. Is this is a coral glow enchi uh possible that other gene, which I'm pretty sure it is in there, uh clown. And he's fifty percent head albino. Nice. Oh, that's a great looking animal. That thing's clean. Oh yeah, yeah. That's the other gene that's playing involved because this is this is his brother. He just shed, so he's he's looking good. This is a coral glow clown. Okay, but it has that other gene in it. You can see the same colors. Just this one doesn't have. The reduced pattern. Yeah, it's got some nice plushing on top there. Jesus. <laughs> he was just giving you guys a kiss. Really? Yeah, he's uh he's pretty mean. He likes and it's feeding time. I, I didn't feed him just no, I think you cut the volume off. How's that? That's good. That's How's right. that? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I cut. I I start feeding on Saturdays, so I if I ever do want to show a snake, I no. can. Yeah. You know, because I have a strong feeding response. I'll feed. I'll feed. Well, I used to feed off about two hundred snakes every week. I didn't feed off two hundred rats every week. Oh Jesus. Yeah. I'm sitting here. I realize I have the super tricks over here too. You got the what? The super tricks. Oh yeah, you gotta show some of them. All right. Even though he's in shed. Yours is better. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I love the super tricks. Yeah, this thing's pretty awesome. Ugh. Super busy. Yeah. See, that looks a lot like my that other trick gene. That other yeah, trick one. Yeah. I was just thinking the same thing when I was looking at this. Well, only thing I gotta pull my I'm pulling mine out so I can see it. Dude, that is I love that super dude. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. <laughs> this is also a possible head albino. I'm I'm gonna have to say it's probably gonna prove out. Yeah, this is pretty bright. And I'm looking at all the white the white outlining and dude, that is nice. Look at the flames. This is another one. Don't really have a favorite, but where the hell is the other one at? Jesus. Super trick. There it is. One's got a different look. It's actually a little bit cleaner looking, I guess. Ooh. Wow, that's got a lot of blushing on the dorsal. 
Yeah. Which I feel like, from what I've seen, that I have some tr a proven breeder trick head albino male that shares that same dorsal. So Ooh, that know. one's definitely gonna. That one's must be head albino. Yes. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Look at, that thing. That's wow, look at the sides on that. Ooh. Now I'd like to. Oh, man. I want to see that in the clown. A super trick clown. I have, well, actually, in a couple of days, I have my clown hat orange ghost to trick pastel pinstripe should be laying eggs. And oh, heck yeah. I need a trick cat clown. I really do. I, I, I produce two leopard trick cat clowns and a trick cat clown, and Pike Lines, Justin from Pike Lines snagged them. They weren't wow. even out of the egg, and he was offering me a deal where I couldn't pass up. Yeah. I should have another clutch. Hopefully, they have, it hasn't ovulated yet, but it's looking good. There's uh, the same clown had orange ghost going to the trick possible had orange ghost. Ooh. So maybe like trick orange ghost that clown. Heck yeah. This is, uh, See, that, that's where the future is. Hets, hets, hets. Yeah. This is another holdback trick from the same clutch. It's like the way she came out. Yeah. It's really light, too, so I feel like this is probably another. I'm sitting here looking. Oh, you cut my mic off. There you go. <laughs> um, <laughs> ah, you got tagged. I trick, still like okay. trick at this all the time. It's ridiculous. Have you noticed that Trick is very aggressive? Yeah. Or I mean, is it? I think most of mine are pretty aggressive to get started with. And then I've had some calm down and then get angry again. So I, I, I don't know. Maybe that's because I handle them more than I do than other ones. They're more in play and breeding. I'm not sure. Yeah, see, this is my first trick. Oh wow! Oh, that yeah. I produced. Yeah, put this girl back. She's definitely not the best eater, unfortunately. Yeah, that's how it goes. I mean, everybody's gonna get those ones. Yeah, my uh, one hundred percent hep pied. Nice. Definitely got some pied tracks. She's got lengths on her, but. Her and her brother was even the worst eater. He he's now he is now eating rats though. He is finally he's on his third rat he's had. He does he it's nice blushing. See, that's where I my pied is I think is bringing because it's a whole different color in strong pie tracks. Wow, nice. These are the first ones that... Uh, That's great. It's great dorsal pattern, too. Yeah, but you can see the difference. In them. Yeah. Totally different colors. Yeah. yeah. Huh. You know. One of them... Just, they're both their brother and sister. No kidding. Yeah, half the clutch came out like him with that dark, rich color and blushing and flaming. And then the other ones just came out like this bright, the normal trick color. Wow. Yeah. Huh. I know um, Dale from Acadia Balls got a 1.1. And uh, yeah, it's good is because Justin bought a baby off me. And. I put it in with another snake to get her going because I heard saw a video of uh, all your females having a problem eating, you know, put a baby ha male hatchling in there and it just gives them a boost out overnight and stuff and triggers them to eat, which surprisingly it worked. All three of the girls went right the next day. I fed them and they all ate and they went almost two months without eating. Oh wow! And uh, awesome. yeah, and it just instantly worked. But during that night, that 180 gram snake, I'm guessing locked up with the uh, pastel because 
few months later, she laid a clutch of eggs. Damn. So, yeah, she laid three eggs and uh, she uh, trick a pastel trick and a normal. Wow. So, that all worked out for you. Gonna love them pie tracks. Wow. <laughs> oh, those ones are nice. I was looking at one of mine earlier, but that's much better than mine. Yeah, he, he is. Yeah, they good to the. Uh, Oh, he's in the shed too. They're not the strong. This is probably the strongest pine tracks that I've seen. Yeah. Wow. And it's not even a hep hide. Really? Well, there wasn't. I don't know. I have no idea. Uh, it was my Corgo Leopard Clown 100% uh, head albino. And I bred it to a uh, pinstripe. Huh. And they came out like they're both in shed. But this is brother and sister. Oh, wow. Brother and sister. That's crazy. And they're both in shed right now. But um, she... More different. She has... Like no pie tracks, but completely. Like that's where, like he is so dark, yeah, unreal dark. And like I said, the, he's usually pretty dark when he's. And she's bright as heck. Like she's dark right now, and she's usually bright. <laughs> they came out of the same clutch, so I don't know. I'm taking a guess. My pinstripe is. Pine, yeah, you I, mean, know. I don't know what have brought that in. I mean, who knows at this point? I mean, I've hatched out head pine animals that have no no markers at all in them, so I mean, yeah. it could, I guess it goes the other way too, possibly. But yeah, I uh, I kept them both back, you know, that is them two are going to be together, you know. Unfortunately, I'll breed him to her, and you know. Because they're both 100% hat clown, 50% head albino, and possible hat pied. Damn. So oh. that's my albino pied project. And then I got <clears throat> my my lavender albino clown project over here. And, you know, uh, those will come out nice. I love to get lavender stuff. Oh, I love the lavender. I uh, That is probably my favorite albino, is the lavender. Yeah, I mean, I remember I wanted to get one of those years ago, and I think it was like four grand or something like that. Yeah, no, my. Uh, but <laughs> once again, the the only reason I have lavender is because the pike line. You know, he offered me that deal that I could not pass it up. So, yeah. uh, he I got a pied male, hundred percent het lavender, sixty six percent het clown, possible gene X. And I have his sister, which is the same thing. And then I picked up the lavender, hundred percent head pied, fifty percent head clown. Is that the trade for the uh, those tricks. head clown tricks? Yeah, yeah. I couldn't pass them up. Emily really likes the dreamsicles, so I figured that those three snakes right there are going to pay for her and her two best friends' school. Huh. You know, that's her. That's their school money. Uh, uh, Ooh. Super Ooh, pastel that's a pastel trick. trick. Yeah, this super pastel trick there. It's got, I think that's the granite. I mean, that's just crazy dorsal pattern on this thing. That is, yeah. I see. I see granite in that all day long. Yeah. Dude, that is so awesome. Because now I got to take. You know she's in. Deep shed. Oops. <laughs> so you can see that granite gene. Because yeah. this is a granite cypress. Damn. And you can see that same pattern. Yeah. You know. The cypress is cool. I don't have any of that stuff. Uh, she's my only cypress I have left now. That's one of my favorite jeans. You know, I wanted to get into that. You know, oh, look at that. I love that. Yeah, because yeah, that... 
of all. Yeah, tell it's one of those snakes that comes out of the egg and you can't believe what you're saying. Yeah, dude. Look at the blushing and flaming. Yeah. Like all blushed right out. Yeah, <laughs> it's crazy. Now that ain't the, was that the mother to this girl? No, this is uh, 2020. So That's a 2020 she, girl? Yeah. So she hasn't bred with anybody yet. She's still a little small. So, Yeah, look at that. So this is the pastel trick, and that's a super pastel trick. Yeah. Just... I, you know what? I I like that pastel, uh, the super pastel better, I think. And I don't yeah, say I mean, that too often. But I love... Huh? I don't know if every super pastel would come out looking like this, I guess. I imagine it's probably the granite. I've had yeah. other super pastel tricks that didn't look like this. So, yeah, I can definitely say that. Yeah. I can say, yeah, the granite is the... Yeah, I think this girl has that, too. Because she does have that granite pattern look to her. You know? But, uh... Well, we're probably going to wrap this up. Just uh, starting to get late. It's already an hour and 46 minutes. <laughs> yeah. My wife was telling me not to stay up all night talking to you. I know, I know. Uh, I can talk a lot. That's why like, I get, I can just keep on going and going. But you I have a lot of energy. Huh? You have a lot of energy. I've been up since 1.30 this morning. Oh, God. So. I woke up at 4.30. I thought that sucked. No, no, 4.30. Oh, geez, I was already done my coffee and everything. <sighs> I was already, I had the snakes all watered and all that done. Yeah. You know, I got to go to, I got to get all this stuff done before I go to work. And then I go to work and then I come back and do a little bit. And then I have to, you know, all that stuff. Jesus. So, I'm nonstop. I go to bed. I get up around 1, 1 30 and I go to bed around like 10, 11 wow. around there. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. I don't need much sleep. I get my power nap and I'm good. <laughs> oh, I well, you, you saw at the expo. You probably that was probably the tightest I've ever been in a long time. Yeah, is that, that expo. Know, you know, you come grab a couple hours of sleep in your truck before the show. Like I've been there before. It's brutal. Yeah, yeah. It was. It would have been great. I finally got to sleep in there, and then all of a sudden the car alarm goes off, and I was all. I was so pissed. That's what I walked in. It was like. I think five o'clock in the morning and I walked right over to that hotel. I'm like, you guys have coffee. He's like, well, you're better off just going to Dunkin' Donuts. I'm like, I don't like Dunkin' Donuts coffee. He's like, oh, well, we got these, but they're $3 for just the little cup there. I'm like, all right. I went over there. I saw the cups there. I grabbed the big cup. Didn't even think of it. I'm like, they're $3. You know, it's like, I don't even care. I just want coffee. Yeah. <laughs> You know, now I don't want to drive to go get coffee. <laughs> no, no. I'm a big fan of doing anything in my house too. I never go out to get coffee or anything. Just make it here. I'm ready to go. It's just yep. Yeah, I actually brought my coffee maker. Did you? I just uh, forgot the filters. Yeah, you got a French press. A what? A French press. I don't know what that is. It's this. so it's just like it's like a glass cylinder. Yeah. Coffee grounds in it. Yeah. And then you pour hot water in, let it sit for like four minutes, and then there's like a cylinder, like a yeah, there's like a cylinder that goes down to the valve. You just push it down, that keeps all the grounds at the bottom. Yeah. The coffee's right there above it. Huh. I, I think I've seen something like that on some movies and everything. Yeah, I mean it's a great thing to try if you're going camping or like traveling to a hotel or something like that. We, like we just went away to Boston a few day, days ago. And just take yep. it with us. that way you're not like looking for coffee or like drinking whatever crap they give you in the room. Yeah, well, that's why I brought my coffee maker. I did. I I got a nice coffee maker. I brought that because I I got the uh, a 400 watt inverter in my truck. Yeah. So I I plug that right in. I can tell you now that is the best invention ever because like my display cases, I put those mats in the ARS. Uh, display case and i plug them right into my truck so now all my snakes are all warm and i don't have to be 100 degrees 
Yeah, I can drive going down the road comfortably. <laughs> bring somebody a snake, you drive it like an hour or something, and it's like 80 degrees in your car. Yeah. I don't have to deal with that anymore. Like, I'm, uh, I'm sorry. I know we're going to... These are the mats. So, anybody? I am a big fan of them. They are cloning mats. You can get them at pretty much any garden store. But they only get to 82 at the hottest in my ARS rack. I an ARS tub. So you can slide this right in there exactly fit. You slide it right down the back of it. So all the all three layers of your display case are sitting here and it heats the whole box right up. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, and it only takes 17 watts to use. Damn. You know, so they don't get hot, so you don't need a thermostat on them. You know, so they work great for it. You know, you go pop it right in there, you pop the cord out through the hole. You carry them right into the hotel, you plug it right in and done. You know, but all right, everyone, we're going to let you go. Uh, thank you, Andrew, for coming on and showing some awesome animals. Oh, thanks for having me. This is great. And uh, thanks for everybody for paying attention and messaging. I saw some people ask me some questions. I'll go through this after we get off and uh, get back to you. Yeah. That, if anybody uh, go check out Andrew, he had, oh, you might as well do it all. How do they get in touch with you? <laughs> uh, you go to my Facebook page, Snake Works, on Instagram. We actually, I have a YouTube channel now too. What? So, yep. Whoa! Was, when did that? I, I, you, you told me you were going to right uh, now. I just start, I actually, it's basically some videos of short tails and that black IMG boa. But again, it's on YouTube, Snake Works. So you know, go give it a, a look or whatnot. Some good stuff on there. All right, I I got like I think eight hundred subs, so I want to see you get eight hundred subs right now. Oh, wow, Everybody, go you. over there and show them some love and subscribe to them. <laughs> I wish uh, it was that easy, <laughs> <I hear you. laughs> but uh, definitely I will be subscribing as soon as I get off this for you. Right, so right. thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Have an awesome night. Have a great snake day, dog day, cat day, tegu day, all that stuff. Short tail day. <laughs> yeah. What Emily would say. Have a good one, everyone. All right. Thank you. Bye bye. Yeah. See ya.